Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Before we get started today, I just wanted to let you know we've created the Symphony POS Support Facebook group where you can talk to fellow colleagues in the industry or ask about Symphony questions or Oracle hospitality in general. It's free to join and I'll leave a link to it in the description below. And with that small announcement out of the way, let's dive into today's video. We had a request to talk about payment keys and how they interact with tips. So I'm gonna sign in and begin a fast transaction here for just one guest and I'm gonna ring in an appetizer and send it. And next we're gonna go to the payment section. So my payments are divided into two main areas. Here on the right I have all of my cash payments and then here on the left I have other tenders such as credit card authorizations and the gift cards. So the cash tenders work more or less all the same as do these two. So that's the main two that we're going to cover today. Obviously, the cash tenders do not prompt for tips the way these do. So that's why I'm going to break them up into two categories. And usually what I see is a lot of places only have one cash key. And as you notice, I have quite a few of them here. So these are quick tenders where if uh, the server receives a $20 bill or $50 bill or $5 bill or whatnot, then they can just enter it using that uh, quick key. So right now my check is $15.90. So let's say that the guest gives me a 20. All I have to do is click the 20 and it's going to tell me what the change due is. And once I give them their change, I can just go ahead and close the drawer or just click OK to get that out of the way. So that's one way to close the check. I'm going to open another transaction again and send this. The next payment key we have is the next dollar up. So again, our check is 1590. So the next dollar up would be 16. So all I have to do is hit this one if I get $16. And now you see the change due is just 10 cents. So the next one, we're going to open another check. Go ahead and send it. And we also have exact cash. So exact cash, if we actually get $15.90 and all we want to do is close it right away, we can just hit exact cash and the check is closed. That one is pretty straightforward. And finally, we have our final situation where the system will actually prompt us for the cash amount. So if I just hit cash, then it's going to ask me exactly what I got. So let's say that I got $25. I just entered 25 here and it's telling me that I have to give them change $9.10. So let's go to EMC and take a look at how these keys are programmed. And here we are in EMC and the tab that I'm going to open is going to be page design. Now my page design is added at the enterprise level under the configuration tab and page design. If yours is added at a different level, make sure to open it at that level such as property or revenue center. And I'm going to go to my transactions page and expand it. And I'm also going to change this aspect ratio just to kind of match my widescreen workstations. And if we go to the payment section, we can start with the cash at the bottom. So the way we design this is first of all, for the type, we're going to select payment tender. And then for the payment tender, when we click the little arrow, these are all the tenders that we have here. And most likely you will have the cash one. And after you click OK, you get presented with this payment configuration uh, window. So by default, the function just says the default, whatever the option bits are selected in the tender media. But to actually add that cash where we get the little prompt here, as you saw earlier, we're going to select the second one called request and it has this little question mark. So now whenever we push this, the little window will appear to prompt us for what the amount is. And the next one, we're going to go to exact cash and we're going to do the same thing. Select our cash, click OK. And then from the function, we have exact. So the first one was request. And then this uh, third one, fourth one here is exact. So this is how you program the exact cash and then go ahead and click OK. And then we have the next dollar up. We'll do the same thing. And you will also have uh, the dollar up with the pound sign right next to it here. So that's how you would program that. 
So we're going to select that and then click OK. And as you notice, these command texts on the bottom, these arguments get auto populated based on what I select here. You have cache colon cache, then a space and then pound. So that's kind of how the system understands what that key does. It just reads this argument, but you don't have to worry about it. The function will do it for you. Now, if we move on to the dollar ones, all we have to do is select the one that says specified. So now we have this further argument down the bottom and all we have to do is enter $5 or whatever the specified key we want to enter. Maybe you have a two euro coin or anything else like that. You can specify which one uh, you're entering. It could be two, it could be 20, it could be anything that uh, you may have. And then all you do is click okay. And you notice the argument gets built here on the bottom. So we have again, cash colon cash space dollar sign space $5. And this gets created by that function. And the other ones are exactly the same. It's just a different amount. So the good thing about these is that you can actually use them in conjunction with each other. So let's say that somebody gives you a $15 uh, cash. So you have a $10 bill and a $5 bill. You can press them in sequence, $10, $5. And then, um, that will close the check and tell you, let's say that the bill was $13. So you pressed 10, five, and then it will tell you change due is $2. The other way you can do it is hit cash and then just enter the amount. And we also have this numeric pad in the middle. If it's easier, uh, you can train your servers and cashiers to actually enter the amount first and then hit cash. So in that situation, you would hit 15.00 and then hit cash. So either way, either they push the button and they enter it on the keyboard or they enter the amount first and then they hit cash. Both of them will work just fine. But that's how you would program all of these different cash keys. And depending on which one, um, you use the most, that's the one you can program. I just added them all just to give them options so they are as fast and efficient as possible. And once you're done, don't forget to save. And now we're back at the workstation and I'm gonna sign in and we're gonna take a look at the other types of a payment tender. So here we have our credit card authorization and finalization. If you do credit card tips, then you can take tips that way. You can take tips on gift cards and it will also work the same for items such as house accounts or if you have a PMS and you do a room charge. So the way this works is let's say that right now my total is 1590 and they sign the check on a $20 and they pay with a credit card. Uh, depending on how your credit card system works, you might have a CC auth button where you press it and then swipe the credit card and then they sign the bill for $20, let's say. Then you would come back, you would enter $20 because the difference is going to be your tip and you press the CC final. Now, obviously, I don't have an authorization on this one, so I'm going to use the gift card redeem for this example. So if I hit gift card redeem, now the system is telling me charge tip amount is four dollars and ten cents is that correct so this is kind of a prompt uh, that will show the servers to make sure they enter the correct amount and then that the charge tip is correct and all they have to do is enter yes and that will work exactly the same for the other payment tender so for the credit cards or for uh, room charges it will work exactly the same you get that little prompt and you do get it if you actually uh, have a zero tip as well. So I'll show you what it does in that situation. If I go to my payment and I enter 1590 and I enter gift card redeem, it just says tip amount is zero. Is that correct? I just answer yes. So you get that prompt in both situations. Now there is a way to turn that off. So let me show you a couple of option bits that we do have available uh, for them in EMC. So we're back in EMC and we're going to take a look at the tender media to see how that button is programmed. So that button was the gift card button. So I'm going to open it up and this button is programmed regularly. Uh, what I have more interesting to show you is here in the charge tip options. So if you do want to charge tips with those payments, you're going to want to do it with your gift cards and your credit cards you have to have the charge tip required button enabled here and you do want to post the amount to gross receipts on the tip reports 
and to charge receipt on the tip reports. So I have these option bits 9, 10 and 11. And also we have to link it to a service charge. So in our service charges, I have regular service charges and then I have gratuities. So the gratuities that I have, these are the auto gratuities, the 18, 20, 22 and 24. And these get applied, for example, if you do room service and you have um, you know, the gratuity automatically added, you select one of these, or this is an open gratuity and this is an open dollar sign gratuity. So that's the one number 11, that's the one that I'm using. And I can show you the configuration on that one as well. So if you go to our open service charges here, I'm gonna open my dollar sign gratuity. So uh, basically the tender media is linked to tips paid. So I'm linking it to make sure it does get posted to the tips paid so the employees see it as a tip. And 100% of this goes on to the tips paid and it's reporting under my service charges. But it is gonna show as a dollar gratuity so we know exactly what it is. As far as option bits, I have one, two, and three enabled. You need to have this one that it's an open gratuity because the amount will be different and you have to have number two that is an amount not a percentage and then number three has to be enabled in order for it to work properly and you can also enable option bit number 12 and once you're done with that all you have to do is close this one and that's how we programmed our tender media in order to accept charge tips now, by default, you will also have that prompt when you over tender. So like I showed you that the check was $19, uh, $15 and 90 cents. The easiest way is to over tender. So enter the final amount, $20 and then hit the key. Uh, alternatively, you can create a tip key if you want to. We can go here to page design, go to the transactions area, and here on the payment key, we could add a separate key that would say dollar sign tip, but I find that that is a little bit more complicated. So the over tendering is the preferred method. I would either suggest to go with one or the other and not give them the option like you can do it this way or do it that way because it's just gonna cause confusion. So just use the over tender method, tell them that that's the way it is and uh, just let them use it like that. So I'm gonna go ahead and close page design. Now, as I mentioned before, there are some option bits that we need to check as well. And those are gonna be in the RVC parameters. So I'm gonna go to my revenue center level here. I'm gonna go into setup and click on RVC parameters. And then in the option bits here, I'm gonna scroll down and I'm gonna look for option bit number 36. So option bit number 36 says, do not prompt for tips, no over tendering if charge tip is required. So if you wanna use the system the way I am using it, you have to make sure that number 36 is not selected. Basically what this will do is, if you do check this box, then any kind of over tendering will be treated as a cash return. So instead of going toward your tips, uh, the system will think that you over tendered and you will give them whatever that amount is back to the customer in cash. So that will definitely unbalance uh, your tip reports. So make sure that this is unchecked. Now, there is also option bit number 46 that you can check if you want. And basically what this does is suppresses that charge tip amount is zero prompt. Now, it only suppresses it for zero, it does not suppress it if there's an actual cash tip on there. I like to have the charge tip amount is zero enabled because a lot of times it can prevent a mistake from happening and I'll show you what I mean. If I leave it on, then the charge tip amount zero does not show anymore. So we're back at the workstation and I'm gonna do a quick update, sign in and imagine this scenario. Let's say that one of our server comes in they ring in a food item, the guest actually gives them the check back and they say, okay, can you charge $20 or they, you know, they sign the thing, the paper. And what they do is they come back and they, they just hit gift card and the check is closed. Now, although the guest did want it to offer the server the difference that $4 and 10 cents in tips, it because I suppressed that prompt, then that your charge, your tip is zero did not appear anymore. So 
it can avoid a mistake like that. If I would have left it off like I had it before, then the server would have gotten a chance to notice it and then um, make sure that they entered the tip correctly. So it's up to you if you think that's gonna speed up service a little bit. If it is very, uh, it's not very often that you receive tips, then you can suppress it like that by choosing option bit number 46. Uh, but if you do, your establishment does receive tips relatively often, then I would suggest you leave it off so that prompt stays on there and it will avoid, uh, you know, especially with credit cards, it's very, very often that people leave tips on credit cards, you know, it, it will avoid many, many mistakes. And that's everything I have for you today. If you do enjoy the content, please leave this video a big thumbs up. It does help the channel grow to spread the word and show this video to multiple people. And thank you very much for suggesting this topic. If you have a topic that you would like to see covered in a future video, make sure you leave it in the comments below. And as always, I'll see you all next time.